Hi guys, Nico here. Today I'm going to show you my one by one pixel display. Um, it's based off distance and it works in a very different way than you would think. But let's just check it out. This is picture one, a creeper face obviously. Um, now you might have noticed that the the parts of the the picture went in in parts. So first um, it was it, it's it's in it's in grids. So first these pictures go and then these go and that's for all over the screen. So now if I load the next one. A sword it resets the old picture and then loads the new one now this is based off of timings uh, it's not like placing or peer so that has to go there and then another one that has to go there no it's just ROM back there and then a dual edge which controls every single input back here and then that, that runs down now the way it works is very interesting um, I can easily toggle this bottom one using a one tick pulse to bring it over there. If I were to to keep this on like forever until I want to retract this one, then it would bud the piston down here though. So I have to use a one tick pulse. Now to toggle the top one, I would have to power this repeater here. So that means pressing that button and then resetting the bottom one so I, I send another one tick pulse to the bottom one so it receives two one tick pulses on the bottom and one on the top so that's how that works now in this situation if I were to be wanting to wanting to toggle the top one too then I will have to press this button and then press this one just like what I did before now, before I've also been thinking about that, um, I thought to reset it, I can just give it a two tick pulse so I can save some space in the, the buses. But no, if I gave this a one tick, uh, a two tick pulse, it would have extended and then retracted the block again, so it would end up like this. Well, it should have end up, ended up like this. So that's why every single pulse, every single control of the display, has to be a one tick pulse. Now I have seven images saved currently on a ROM back there, but you can extend that infinitely. Uh, this is just a proof of concept though, so yeah, the wiring for this could be way different for, well maybe you, uh, you find a different way to wire this up, but this is uh, mo the only way I found to make it um, infinitely expandable in any direction, which this display currently is. Except because of the the height limit of Minecraft, this display is limited to about 60 blocks high. Um, because, as you can see, the the wiring behind here is about four times as high as the display itself. This display is 10 by 10, and it it lags a little bit, um, but uh, it's it's really cool. And besides that, I also wanted to say, maybe we can see it in this video. So if I load a new picture. Uh, well, yeah, this it, it didn't fill today. It, it hasn't filled today yet, so that's uh, good news. But sometimes, this display rarely fills. So that means, I, I'm actually saying that one pixel would be wrong. Like, it could be that this pixel was back there. So, like this. Now, if that happens, if that problem occurs, then if I were to load a new picture, then that pixel will still be wrong. So, I advise, I think it's the best way to make this work reliably and to make this not happen is by sending a two tick pulse to uh, each of the repeaters which are sitting directly 
besides the piston, setting a two tick pulse and then a one tick pulse into the repeaters, which are like this, not these ones though. Because what that will do is it'll reset the screen in whatever state it was. Um, and then, um, to, let's go into the wiring. So, as you can see, behind here I have some staggered wiring. Um, I actually staggered these inputs. So, on the next line, what I did is I had a repeater right here and here. And that was to make it a lot, that made it a lot easier to power each repeater individually. But still, it is pretty big, as you can see. So, um, the way I staggered it is the input has to be like this, and then the next one has to be like this. So, yeah, it, you, you could get the screen in, like, parts of two wide. Now, um... I, I told that when I was toggling this pixel, I also need to toggle this pixel, but just a little bit later. So when I fire, uh, let me just go to here. When I fire this repeater, this repeater has to fire a little bit later too. So each of the lines that have to reset the, the pixel on the bottom, they have a repeater running in the, the, the input underneath them. So this input will first power this repeater, and then three ticks later it goes down into this repeater, and then into this input. And then this red part here, that's um, two by two dual edges, and they work just by powering the piston and then keeping them powered. So when it extends, then when the block is here, one tick later the torch turns off and then the torch turns off and one tick later the piston retracts that's very simple and this part here is just some a way to make the, the signal go like this and then on the next one it goes up so they don't um, they don't uh, go into each other and then this part here is a big a big ROM so here I have all the, the, the pictures saved um, and then there is some specific timings to these in order to make the 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 grid. So these pictures go first, and then these like that. And for that, I had to have some repeaters in here, and that's what I do over here. Then down here, I have uh, the the selector. This is a selector I invented a long time ago. Um well that's basically all I wanted to cover in this video, I think. Um I'll post a download link for a world with this thing in it in the description below. And if you like this video or or this build, please like the video, hit that green button because it really helps helps me out and I'll see you guys next time.